Okay, Greg back. What literally what I want to make a lightning bolt MMA update and uh, I have to correct one of my mistakes from my prior videos and it was not Ed Herman, not short fuse that uh, got busted for marijuana metabolites which in my opinion it, it's not a banned substance so people therefore shouldn't be punished for it. I mean, if there was a drug dealer that sold marijuana metabolites, would you buy it from him? Of course not, because it would do nothing. All it does is prove that you smoke marijuana, you know, within a certain time frame, which you probably shouldn't have. So, um, he did receive a six-month suspension. It wasn't Ed Short Fuse Herman. It was actually Pee Wee, Dave Herman, that lost um, via submission to Noguera uh, in Rio. And, um, of course, Stefan Bonner put a uh, exclamation point on his career with uh, anabolic steroids uh, uh, positive. Jake Shields, I believe it was the exact same. I believe it was uh, steroids. I, I, that's that's what I read. Simply a rumor. I, I had never really... Let me, let me just, I can't stand this, really, this new format. Anyway, uh, I... I um, I knew I wasn't clear on what happened to Shields. All I know is his victory over his uh, his last adversary was Ed Herman, and that's all I could think of is how people mixed up the stories. Um, I did search it online, both on my phone. I, I, I was so confused on which Herman you know got popped, and it was Dave Herman, not Ed Herman. It was Jake Shields that fought Ed Herman uh, to a three round decision, um, grinded out a victory, and was overturned by the commission to a no contest. So uh, Jake Shields simply admitted to taking a, a banned substance and received a uh, six month uh, five thousand uh, six month uh, suspension five thousand dollar fine and um, uh, it, it, it looks to me like this is becoming a, a huge problem uh, especially in our sport um, whether it be marijuana the, the, the whole metabolite thing just it fucks me up because it's not a drug you know it, it just proves that you did drugs in a time span you probably shouldn't so I think they should definitely lessen up just you know ease up on the pot smokers I mean really it's it's if, if it were up to me, and I, I would certainly be a well-accomplished mixed martial artist by now. And, and for sure, within uh, 30, 60, 90 days, if I was, say I was a chronic pot smoker, say I was a meth addict, I would make sure that I went to rehab, if, you know, and, and I wouldn't use 30, 60, at least 60 days out, at least two months out, I wouldn't use anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't even drink, you know, because of the weight cut. Um, I wrestled in high school, cutting weight sucked. Um, I did jujitsu. Um, uh, it, in uh, Lawrenceville here in Pittsburgh at, at uh, Henzo's Academy and cutting weight sucked so um, I, I mean uh, you know I know what it's like I, I mean I get, I get the gist of it but it, it's definitely becoming a problem Bonner did look huge and I don't think he needed uh, you know I mean maybe you know you're going out you want to go out you know fighting the best he did ask for big names um, he, he was uh, tipped off by uh, Chael Sonnen and uh, uh, Forrest Griffin, both who have faced Silva at 205. I'm sorry, um, uh, not Chael. Chael faced him twice at 185. Uh, Griffin at 205. Um, about what to do, how uh, how to um, how to prepare, um, and what it feels like to get in the ring with Silva. So he did have some insider information on what it was like to uh, to fight. I didn't think it was necessary at all for him to take any steroids. Uh, and last, I just watched uh, uh, Ultimate Insider. When in Ultimate Insider, he said that he had th about three and a half weeks to prepare. Uh, to fight the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, which by the way, Anderson Silva is about right now currently fighting, definitely uh, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, and he made a fan out of me. I was never a Spider fan, never. I was never an Anderson Silva fan. He made me a fan uh, with his last performance uh, at 205 against Bonner. But against Bonner, I mean, he had three and a half weeks. He said that's about one fourth of the preparation time as he usually gets for a fight. So I mean, I think that's in the back of his mind. You know, let, let's you know, let's do some juice. And you know, kind of make the odds even. Uh, it was a, he's the biggest uh, underdog in UFC main event history. Um, he lost a fight in embarrassing fashion, uh, as did Griffin, as did uh, Irvin. Pretty much anyone that's ever fought um, um, Silva at, at 205 has lost, you know, definitely convincingly and uh, in the first round. And it's uh, it's been embarrassing for them. It's been an embarrassing experience. He mentions I know Nick Diaz is still serving his. He, uh, Gracie did give an update. Uh, he will be back early 2013 for sure. Um, uh, opponent TBA, but there is a very strong rumor that's going to be Koshek, which would be lovely for me coming from Pittsburgh. It'd be 412 versus 209. I'm from the 412. Nick's from the 209. Nick's my favorite fighter. I always support Koshek because he's from Edinburgh, about an hour drive from here. So, um, yeah, to me, I would like to see that fight. Uh, but it, it, what it, either or, who? Um, I mean, they're talking about Cantman. We got Hendricks out there uh, kicking ass at 170. 
Anderson doesn't show up to fights unless he's going to call somebody out. And he did uh, report to Ariel Hawani that he is going to call GSP out if he does defeat Carlos Condit. Now, people are uh, are, um, are bashing Condit, and he's uh, about a 5-1 to one underdog, depending on uh, what website you check out. But um, to me, uh, having a 92% finishing ratio, which is the number one finishing, he's, he's the natural-born killer, seriously. He, the guy finishes 92% of his fights. Nobody, he's, he's, he's number one. He leads uh, in MMA. Uh, he has the most finishes at 92%. He has the best finishing ratio. Uh, GSP is, is by far way, way further down the list, number 11. So um, people are counting him out. You know, if he wins, um, it's reported to Ariel Hawani. He did confirm that Anderson Silva is going to be there and call him out. So there's this potential super fight. I don't know what way it would take place at because Silva is so much bigger than GSP. But GSP, I'm sure, you know, uh, it, it, he's cleaned out the division not once but twice now. So it, it had, you know, say beats Conor. That's that's cleaning out the division twice. Um uh, I think uh, I would still love to see, uh, uh, if he loses, I would definitely love to see him face Diaz as soon as possible um, uh, upon returning. Diaz upon returning. And um, uh, a bit scrambled. Um, I don't have uh, my droid. I don't have any uh, notes. So um, I, I just wanted to touch on the drug issue and definitely make uh, uh, make it known that it, 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 at some websites it does report that Ed Short Hughes Herman got popped for marijuana metabolites. It's not Ed Herman. Dave Herman failed uh, uh, drug test for marijuana metabolites. Not sure about his suspension. Uh, he lost the fight anyway against Nogueira. Got submitted. Um, did a good job, but got submitted um, on that same car. Uh, I wouldn't want to, you know, to damper, uh, put a that little dab, you know, on, on my career like that. I wouldn't want to go out like that. He did officially retire. He had uh, just uh, had a baby. So, um, you know, congratulations, Stefan Bonner. Thank you very much for all the fights. Very entertaining. And uh, on that note, we're going to end it. Uh, another boring video. Like I said, we're going to make it very quick. So hopefully I can edit this and um, cut some of the crap out. But um, the drug problem in MMA is definitely imminent and it's making it's rearing its ugly head and it's only getting worse. And uh, I think it's just, it's bad for the sport. And um, hopefully, you know, some of the fighters can clean up their act. Take care of each other.